All right, time for our third photo. Let's go macro. I'm going to up the challenge here. I actually usually I don't shoot a ton of macro. I uh, usually especially don't shoot pygmy seahorses just because they're really, really hard, honestly. And uh, but So here's one that needs some serious help. I think it will be a good uh, challenge for us. So let's work the process here. Basically, we've got really overexposed. This may be one of the first images where we can actually drop the exposure to start just a touch. And in the end, who knows, we'll probably have to bump that back up, but let's start with there. Contrast, I'm not going to touch it. Highlights, this is going to be huge. But up here, all through here, all this white, I don't think it's blown out. So when we drop these, we should be able to see a lot of detail emerge. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Excellent. All right, so there we go. I'm actually going to come back here now and bring that exposure back in. We'll deal with that at the end. Um, shadows. These are going to be shadows. There's kind of an awkward shadow here. So it's not, not the greatest shot in the world, but it's sharp and uh, well composed, basically. But let's drop those shadows and see if we can make these this background darker. There you go. Sure enough. All right. Background's darker. Now with the whites, we're not going to be able to push these too far because we are right at the edge of blowing this out. So I'm not going to touch them. The blacks, on the other hand, where previously we haven't been as aggressive with that, this time we can drop the blacks and really dump these dark areas and make them really disappear on us. So let's see here. There we go. We don't want to go too far. Notice how it gets a little contrasty on the horse. So let's go right about there. So just with those quick exposure changes, check this out. All using image data that was already in the camera. We didn't paint this black. You know, we haven't manipulated the photo any, we're just developing it. Okay, now let's go into color here. White balancing wise, not a ton to do. Uh, there's usually a lot more color balancing work that needs to be done on wide angle shots, uh, macro shots, because it's so close, not as much. The one thing though to focus on macros are the shadows. I don't mean this shadow here. Uh, in this image here, there's not really that many. But what you'll find in macro pictures oftentimes is that the shadows will be the color of the water, usually cyan or green. They're really jarring to see them that way. So that's what you can use this to kind of e take the edge off those shadows. In this case, this was shot with the uh, CNC YSD1 strobes, which shoot pretty warm. So we're going to go ahead and cool those off just a little bit. Right about in there. Looks good. And the tint, we not going to just not touch it. There's no magenta or green in this image. We're going to leave that alone. Now that we'll go back into vibrance. If we bump the vibrance, it will bring out the underrepresented colors. So there's all the way up. We don't want to go that far, but as we come down, maybe somewhere right about there. That's good. Saturation, on the other hand, it just makes everything look fake and candy colored. So we're going to reset that to zero. I just click on this. It brings this up like this. I press zero on my keyboard and it resets that to zero. All right. Now to effects. We will, like I said, we'll zoom in. It's a nice, good view. You can see there's, it still needs some help. It's a little fuzzy, a little soft. Let's see what we can do about that. I'm going to add some texture in. That's not really doing much. That's going to be more of a clarity and a dehaze, I think. There we go. Get that clarity bump. And there we go, dehaze. That's nice. All right, so we come back out, and guess what? It's going to be too contrasty and probably too dark. There you go. Too contrasty, too dark. Come back in, circle back to the beginning, bump that exposure a little bit. We don't want to go too much. Watch these whites. And lose some of that contrast we picked up in the process. Now, the one thing I will, I will I'm going to vignette this one. Um, you know, let's think about that. The main reason, though, for the vignetting here is this is really bright. You want to avoid bright things on the edges of your photos because they draw the eye and they're distracting. 
Your eye wants to go here, but it's also getting pulled up here and over here a little bit. You really don't want bright down here because your eye, usually for most of us, we will view a photo from the bottom left to the upper right. This is the most important spot. If you put your subject, put it here as your eye works its way up. If you put a subject way up here, it can get lost. So try to put it here, but you can go on. A, there's all kinds of different variations of that, but left to bottom left to upper right. Okay, back to the vignette. Yeah, we're gonna overdo that one. This time again, it's an artistic choice, but I'm just gonna vignette it down like that. Okay, so using all basic controls in Lightroom, we went from, big reveal, original photo, which you would be can, really tempted to hit the delete button on, to final product. No Photoshop required, no major adjustments necessary. And with a little bit of work in Photoshop, we could probably really make this a really attractive picture, actually. So hope you enjoyed that one, and let's do another one.